and then you go over to right over the border in the land of Israel. They're, they're, they're Israeli citizens, but it's a Muslim area. And here's what they're doing. Yeah. It's because of all the oppression of Israel. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they've got every opportunity that the Jews have. Every one of them. But they're sitting there on their hands. Actually, this is probably better. They're sitting on their hands. They're talking. They're smoking their peace pipes. Conniving. They're conniving. That's right. And then they, they open up their whatever they got from the store and they eat it and they take the stuff and throw it right over their shoulder. And here's a Jew coming behind them and picking up their garbage. And just industrious, hardworking people. And you know what? It's the same thing with America. We have worked hard. We've been industrious. The world envies us. And then they come and they stop up our wells. And, you know, I don't want to say America. I don't want to brag about our country and especially in the state we're in now. But... This hasn't changed in 4,000 years. No. This is exactly the same thing as that God has blessed these people. It ought to, I don't know how somebody can't just simply open their eyes. You know what? I, I, I don't know how they can't do that and say, we're a bunch of dolts. We're a bunch of lazy sluggards. And those guys over there are doing something. Maybe if we do what they do, we'll be prosperous too. Exactly. Instead of just taking everything from them. And just, right. Oh, oh, sorry. Oh, mm. Okay. That's right. They just want to destroy it. They want to lob bombs in there and get rid of them. They don't even want a trace of it because it, it's an indictment on them, just leaving a trace of it. So instead, they, they cover it up. They fill up the well and they cover it up. So please, go ahead. Uh, then Abimelech said to Isaac, move away from us. You have become too powerful for us. Oh, once again, does that sound like anything? Exactly yeah. the same thing. Yeah. One guy and his wife, and maybe some flocks and herds, whatever he had with him. One guy. And he moves into an area, and an entire city says, move away. And we got a few million Jews living on this teeny little piece of property, and they are more powerful than all all of the people around them, millions and hundreds of millions of people, and they can't get out of their own way. They're, they're a, a basket case, a disaster. And instead of saying, we will participate in this with you, they say, go away from us. And what are they doing? They're trying to push the Jewish people right into the Jews. Yeah? Uh, unbelievable. To, uh, three verses, and we've completely confirmed what hasn't changed in 4,000 years. Go ahead. So Isaac moved away from there, and he camped in the valley of Gerar and settled there. Isaac reopened the wells that had been dug in the time of his father Abraham, which the Philistines had stopped up after Abraham died. And he gave them the same names his father had given them. And you know, they've opened up those wells again 2,000 years later, and they've given them the same names. It's just history repeating itself. Yeah. Mom and I standing down there at Beersheba, same well that Abraham had dug thousands of years ago. And unbelievable, just unbelievable. All right, go ahead, Ken. Isaac's servants dug in the valley and discovered a well of fresh water there. But the herdsmen of Gerar quarreled with Isaac's herdsmen and said, The water is ours. Yeah. So he, of named, is. he named the well Esek. Esek, okay. And Esek means to quarrel. So that's why it says, as I said, when you're reading the Bible, you're going to see these again and again where the name confirms the action or whatever happened in the area or the type of land or whatever. But unless you know what the word means, you don't know. So what do you mean to Isak? What does that mean? But it means quarreling. They quarreled? Okay, we'll call it quarrel. Go ahead. Because they disputed with him. Then they dug another well, but they quarreled over that one also. So he named it Sitna. Sitna, which means enmity or strife, fighting. All right? So because they're doing the same thing. Go ahead. He moved on from there and dug another well, and no one quarreled over it. He named it Rehoboth, saying, Now the Lord has given us room, and we will flourish in the land. From oh, okay, hang on a sec. That one means spacious. He's finally found his space, so he's got the spaciousness around him. All right, and um, uh, the Lord has made room for us, and we shall be fruitful in the land. But once again, you know what? It's the same thing as we see today. It's just uh, that which has been will be again. That which has been done will be done again. Nothing new under the sun. All right, and that's what's going on here. Okay, 23. From there he went up to Beersheba. That night the Lord appeared to him and said, I am the God of your father Abraham. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. I will bless you and will increase the number of your descendants for the sake of my servant, Abraham. Okay, he's at Beersheba. Does anybody remember what Beersheba means? 
Well of oath. Well of oath. Be'er is the well, and then Shiva is an oath, or it also means seven. The number seven is Shiva. Okay, so the well of the oath or the well of the seven, because he set apart seven ewe lambs for that oath at the time. Now, before we go on, he is at Beersheba, and the Lord is speaking to him. Okay, I want to go to the account of Israel heading down to Egypt. And I'm pretty sure about this. I want to make sure that I'm right. But um, he's, um, Israel is heading down to Egypt. And I think that it's at Beersheba that he is once again spoken to by the Lord. So let me see. Joseph could not find him. He gave them... Uh, let's see. Where is this? So he, Israel took his journey, 46, with all that he had and came to Beersheba and offered sacrifices to the God of his father Isaac. Then God spoke to Israel in visions of the night and said, Jacob, Jacob, and he said, here I am. So he said, I am the God of, the God of your father. Do not fear to go down to Egypt, for I will make you a great nation there. I will go down with you to Egypt, and I will so surely bring you up again. You'll be dead when I bring you up, but he will bring you up. And, and also meaning his, his seed after him. You meaning you and your posterity. And Joseph will put his hand on your eyes, meaning that Joseph is going to be the one to, to be there when you die. All right, so I, as you see, Beersheba has a significance, and you're going to see this again and again and again throughout the Bible. When Beersheba is mentioned, it's the southernmost area or part of the land of Israel, and he's about to depart into Egypt, and God is comforting him in that at the same time, this is where he's at. He's in Beersheba, and it's a really barren place down there, isn't it? I mean, it's Beersheba is... You've got to be a hardy person to want to live. In, it's, it would be like going out and living in the Arizona desert. I mean, those Indians out there live, but I don't know how they do it. I, I, unbelievable. You've got to know the land or you're not going to make it. And uh, wells were really, really important back then. So here he is, uh, Beersheba, and I don't remember where we were, so go ahead and... 25. Uh, 25. Isaac built an altar there and called on the name of the Lord. There he pitched his tent, and there his servants dug a well. Meanwhile, Abimelech had come to him from Gerar with Ahuzath, his personal advisor, and Phicol, mm -hmm. the commander of his forces. Isaac asked them, why have you come to me since you were hostile to me and sent me away? Okay. Why do you think? Don't read it. Why do you think that they've come to him? We want a well. Well, they want a well. They want more than just the well, though. What, why have they come to him? They see that he has prospered. 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 Right. And we're going to see the same thing again with Israel. Hang on, I want to go up here. Uh, Laban, I won't even go to it, but you know the story. Israel goes up there, yeah. and he prospers. And then Laban, what does he do to get Israel to stay up in Padan and Moran? He knows that he has got this good thing going. He marries off his oldest daughter. has nothing to do with culture. It has to do with the fact that he wants him to stay. And this is how he's going to do it. He's going to deceive him and he's going to give him the older daughter and then he's going to say, you can work seven more years for my younger daughter, but at least he's good enough to give her to him after a week of the bridal week with uh, Leah so that he has two wives. But uh, that's why he did it. There's no doubt about it. He saw the blessing that was going on and that's what's going on here. This guy has been moved out, moved out, moved out into a place where nobody wants to be this barren place in Beersheba, and he's blessing them. And the people say, ooh, we want to make a treaty with you. Why, why would they want to make a treaty with a single guy and a bunch of herdsmen working for him and maybe his wife, and that's about it out there? Because the blessing of the Lord. Go ahead, Ken. They answered, we clearly saw that the Lord was with you. So he said, there ought to be a sworn agreement between us. Oh, by the way, it says, we have saw that the Lord is with you. Right there. So that, that it confirms it. And so he says, now they want this sworn agreement, which is exactly what's going to happen to his son Israel coming back from there. And Laban chases after him. He gets to this place and they, he asks for a sworn agreement. All right. So these people are taking. And what are they trying to do? Bringing in history again. What are they trying to do right now in Israel? With Israel. They're trying to get them to give a sworn agreement. They are trying to force Israel's hand, and this nothing changes throughout history. It's again and again and again. And I understand, I don't know, I didn't hear the whole thing. It was the lead into Glenn Beck today, which he always talks about three hours later, so that he keeps you there listening to it, all the nonsense in the middle. But he said something about um, uh, Obama, and I, I, I want to check this out when I get home, but apparently Obama has given him like either 10 days or 30 days or I, I, whatever to make up their mind as to what? He's trying to force them within the next month or so to, by September? Okay. Force them 
to do this. And he's given them a, a, a certain amount of time. I'm telling you, we, we are ripe for judgment in this nation. With our leader, as I said, in the book of Kings, it's the king that brings down judgment on the land of Israel. Every single time. And we are ripe for judgment with him. Not because of all the things we're doing to ourselves, abortion and all that. We're ripe for judgment for that. But the fact is that Israel is the apple of God's eye and he has reinstated that nation there for a reason and we are forcing ourselves into a position we won't be able to get out of Amen. because of this guy so Amen. and that's all of this is exactly what's happening here and then the son Israel and all the way down through this book it's all dealing with that covenant God has made and promised to keep Daniel 9 24 through 27 says there are seven more years and he has put them in the land to give them those seven more years. And we are causing this to become a point against ourselves. So keep that in mind. Anyway, go ahead. We'll, we'll go on without bothering you. I'm kidding, of course. I, I'm going to stop you immediately, but go ahead. Okay. Um, let us make a treaty with you that you will do no harm just as we did not molest you, but always treated you well. Oh, really? And then yeah. sent you away in peace. Doesn't that sound like today? Well, we threw, we threw in 300 bombs and you retaliated and took out the bomb sites and killed all of the people that were doing it and were scared. So we've been really good to you and let's make a treat. It's, oh, this whole thing is happening before our very eyes. All people need to do is just open up this book and look at it and say, I am going to be objective. I'm not going to be this biased person that I've been my whole life, but I'm going to simply see this book for what it is and they would realize that History is repeating itself yes. right from the words we're reading right now. You give people too much credit. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, we do. That's what I'm saying. They would have to be objective, and they can't. They just, they want to, they yeah. don't want to believe Scales that, eyes, right. You know what? They don't want to believe that God would favor the Jews or, you know, and I, watching Wiener, you know what I think of with Wiener when I've been watching this the past couple days? I haven't heard this, anything about it. Well, I'll tell you what, the, the same verses come to my mind every time I see a Jewish person do this. They're in charge of the DNC. They're, Ginsburg makes these decisions on the, the court. Wiener doing what he does, and he won't step down, and he has no remorse over it other than the fact that he got caught. And I, it, the same verses come to mind again and again and again. It's from Ezekiel 38. I'll read it to you real quickly, just so you know, because I'm making a point about what we're, what we're about to talk about. It says here... Um, Actually, it might be uh, 36. It says, But I had concern for my holy name, which the house of Israel had profaned among the nations wherever they went. These people that bear his name, Israel, okay, they bear his name and they are out here, even to this day, Wiener and Ginsburg and, and that, what's her name, Wasserman Schultz, well, that's exactly what I was thinking of, and name after name, out in Hollywood doing all these perverted things, and Adam Sandler and all these people, they profaned among the nations wherever they went, therefore say to the house of Israel, thus says the Lord God, I do not do this for your sake, O house of Israel, but for my holy name's sake, which you have profaned and are profaning today among the nations, okay, wherever you went. And the, the thing that we need to understand is, and what the world can't see, is that why would God bless those horrible people? Because He is God and His name is on them. That is what we need to understand. It's not that we are here to defend Wiener when he does something wrong, or all of these other people that are mentally perverted about their their lifestyle, about their theology, about how they treat the God that has their name on them, it's because God's name is on them. Okay? So we need to be careful. Some people take it too far. Some Christian denominations are like, Israel does no wrong. Right? They do wrong. Yes. The Jewish people are so corrupt, but it doesn't matter because God has made a promise to them. It is for His name's sake. And that's why we support them. Not because of who they are, but because of his name being on them. So actually it is who they are, but not who they are as individuals, if you know what I'm saying. That's the important thing to remember, is that what we're seeing here is all tied into that and what is coming. Okay, please, go ahead, Cam. And now you're blessed by the Lord. Isaac made a feast for them, and they ate and drank. Early the next morning, the men swore an oath to each other. Then Isaac sent them on their way, and they left him in peace. Okay, I bet you. This is just me. I may be totally wrong on this. Could be totally wrong. But it says, they made a feast, 
All right, hang on. You don't touch us. Don't harm us. You've sent us away in peace. Um, so he, meaning Isaac, made a feast and they ate and drank. I will bet you that when this happens, Israel is going to have a big feast of peace for all of these people. That which has been will be again. And we've seen verse after verse after verse, which is happening as we live right now.